Ministers, ladies and gentlemen, a very good afternoon to all of us. As a university rector, I often hear anecdotes about how universities are moving into the future with their eyes toward the past. So you can understand that I am very proud to speak to you today as a representative for idealism talking about open educational resources and the future. The Open University of UK declares its mission to be open to people, places, methods, and ideas. Similarly, my own university, Universitas Terbuka, has also committed to making higher education open to all. Dr. Jan Hyland, in 2006, said that openness is in the breadth of life for education and research. When acknowledging the potential of OER to change education to the better, and how universities like the Open University of Catalonia uses open innovation to reinvent education, I would suggest adding to Highland's poetic statement today that openness is also the breath of life for innovation in education. So why are we here today? We are here today to boost the creation and take up of OER. Why? to show our children, the youngsters, the adults, the lifelong learners, the underprivileged, to all who want knowledge that open means hope. Even OER goes far beyond open and distance learning universities. So you can understand why these actors early saw the potential of OER. Committed to openness, OER quickly has become an integrated part of learning in these universities. All over the world, you will find local, regional, even global initiatives that come from these universities. And they are not alone. In fact, it is the other way around. University leaders, advocates for openness, and the broad range of committed idealists together with their governments and their organizations, have made it possible and feasible for us to adopt a declaration that will give us the first global framework for OER. I believe you should regard all higher education institutions, all universities, and in particular open and distance learning universities, as core future resources for facilitating the worldwide breakthrough for openness in education. Is our global education system ready for that global challenges as it is? We know that no less than 67 million children and 74 million adolescents are out of schools. We also know that 793 million people lack of basic literacy skills. And about 100 to 150 million new places for higher education are needed before 2025. All are numbers from UNESCO. In addition, we know that there are far too many dropouts or push-outs from the educational system. On average, 25% are pushed out from high school education in OECD countries. And in many countries, the numbers are much, much higher. Each push-out is one too many. And the higher education itself leaks like a sieve. Unemployment among youth has in many parts of the world reached unthinkable, unacceptable rates. Education has to contribute in knowledge supply for new jobs and growth. It almost goes without saying. On top of all this, there is an enormous need for re-educating the adults in public and private sectors on a higher education level all over the world. Look at China to give you an idea. In Tianjin only, one of the largest cities in China, the city government foresee that two to three million civil servants will need to be re-educated on a higher education level in the next years to satisfy the need in public services. Or in my own country, Indonesia, no less than 2 million teachers need to be upgraded in both qualification and competencies within the next two years. The educational system needs reinvention and openness is a key opportunity to do that. I would love to do the job for you, but I know we universities cannot do the job for you. Even if we are an enormous unreleased resource, we cannot. I can contribute though, if I can trust that you, governments, 
will give us a favorable framework for the development, the take up and use of OER to realize the hope of the openness. I can contribute together with all my colleagues around the world if you, governments and international stakeholders offer incentives for taking OER to the next phase. I believe this is the best investment that you can ever make now. So we need a favorable framework and incentives from you, from the governments and from the international community. We don't need regulations. We might even need deregulations and get the trust in being self-regulators because the responsibilities for the content and quality of OER ultimately have to be with us, the faculty and the students, the producers and the users. We also need you to help us remove all barriers for high quality open education. There might be barriers in law, in guidelines, in practice, in finance, in attitude, in awareness, and in culture. I will take the responsibility to move, but you have to stand by me. So what does a favorable framework mean? I am very happy with the initiative for the OER declaration, and the favorable framework should be grounded on that declaration. However, I will highlight the following issues. First, we as higher education institutions are dependent of governments that are committed to the public funding for educational resources be made open educational resources. Second, remove all hinders for utilizing OER. Make open to an opportunity including enabling environments for use of information and communication technologies and also in laws. And thirdly, that governments and international stakeholders offer incentives for universities in creating regional and global networks to take up OER, to harmonize OER guidelines, to create sustainable and global OER repositories, to intensify research and innovation in OER, and to cooperate regionally and globally in meeting challenges from a more open and online world. I believe these three measures will help in realizing the potential of openness. We, as leaders of the educational community in the world, must put OER on top of our knowledge agenda to achieve breakthrough for the use of OER. I see that as a duty for me as a university leader. We need to initiate strategies and actions so that faculty can harvest the opportunities from OER and change from a teacher-oriented to a student-oriented education. And that students use OER as a primary educational resource and are key participants in the further development of OER. And the production and use of OER contribute to the innovation in education, in educational institutions, in universities and in the relation and exchange with private and public sector in the knowledge supply for developing the society. OER becomes a key factor in reinventing education. Finally, as a representative for idealism and International Council for Open and Distance Education, as a woman from Indonesia, as a rector from one of the largest universities in the world, I feel no contradictions between these roles in promoting open educational resources. Openness in learning means hope. OER means hope. Thank you.